guys, welcome back to the Spinny channel where we are unfiltered, unafraid, and pain recognized as pain. I filmed this video yesterday and I filmed it in a full face of makeup because I, I tend to use makeup as a shield. I feel like if I spend as much time as it takes for me to put a face of makeup on, then I'll be more conscious not to cry it off. Um, but it felt disingenuous. And I've... It's been a rough enough um, time dealing with it that I didn't want to put out a disingenuous video because I was inspired by a really, really um, wonderful YouTuber who said that I had a voice when I didn't think I had one. And I didn't want to use that voice in a way that wasn't genuine with you. So I came on here, I haven't showered in a week, and I want to talk to you about living your life indoors. When my husband was working for seven weeks away from home, we lived in a hotel. And I didn't really realize, I knew, if you're new, I, I had a stroke in July, July 3rd of 2018. I don't think you ever remember the day that you have a stroke. And it was followed by a grand mal seizure. And that's when I had to stop working. I have a host of other conditions that led up to it, but I'm not going to go into them now. But at home... I have my chair, my electric chair, I've got my bed, I've got all these wonderful things that make my house comfortable for me. As comfortable as it can be. You know, I'm always in pain, you know that, I've told you that. I think a lot of you are the same way. So I'm surrounded by all the things that make me feel comfortable and enclosed and I'm in my bubble. And I'm comfortable and then I go to the hotel for seven weeks and I don't have all those things and I realize just how inside I live my life. I brought the dog in and out to go to the bathroom and I would see people on the way and I would think, I wonder what they're doing today. I wonder where they're going today. Because I know I'm just going back to my room. And I've realized that something odd has happened since I've stopped working. And that is that you lose this contact with the outside world that gives you validation. When you go into work and you do a good job, somebody other than your friends or family say, good job, you get accolades, you interact with people different people and it gives you some kind of internal peace and it also gives you these social skills and I'm not saying I'm lacking in social skills because I'm not I'm not um but it kind of allows your mind to work in a different way and I'm dancing around this subject because I haven't really come out and said this in a video but I don't talk to my family. My family lives about 10 minutes away from me and I don't talk to them. I don't want that to be the way that it is. And I hope that it changes. But sadly right now, my family are in a place where they think that it's my behavior that needs to change and I'm not saying that there doesn't need to be some mutual conflict resolution but every time that happens I'm the one that's expected to give and I can't do it anymore so because of that I don't have the support of family close by let me rephrase that. I don't have the communication of family close by. And 
I have three friends, three true ride or die friends, um, that made the purge, <laughs> as I call it, and it's not a purge that I did, it's a purge that illness does. You know, you know what I'm talking about. One lives 45 minutes away, one lives two hours away, and one lives right here. But she works two jobs, and she has two kids. And to be quite honest with you, no matter your belief system, this person is going to be granted wings when she leaves this earth. I fully believe it. So I just have my husband. My husband and my son, but my son is 21 years old. You know, he's living a life of his own. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that I, I'm not very good at sharing this with him. I, I don't feel like he should carry this pain. I don't feel like anybody but me should carry this pain. I mean, there's a reason that I... There's a reason that I was given it. So, you tend to count on her. I tend to count on my husband for everything. Every bit of validation that I need, every bit of comfort that I need, every bit of attention that I need. And it's not fair to him because he should have help with that. And then, because I have nothing to do but sit here, you pick apart everything. He didn't hold my hand during this TV show. Does, does he not love me that much anymore? He didn't, you know, kiss me as he walked by. Does that mean he's mad at me? And couple that with a stroke that makes you not truly trust the thoughts and feelings that are going through your head. It makes, it makes for a really, a really hard dichotomy. I've been, I've been really lost since I stopped working, which is why I think I clung to it so hard. And the worst part is, we are people who want to do things in the bodies of people who cannot. It's easy to say, go out and meet people. I can't. It hurts. I walked down my driveway to get the, the mail. And I'm done. That's just the bottom line, and the people who are willing to come and sit in the house that can't be cleaned because my husband works two jobs and I can't move, they live far away or they have lives of their own. So, you continue to spin your reels and try to figure out how at 39 years old, you're going to do this for the rest of your life? How do you do this for the rest of your life? It's hard. It's hard. And social media is a great, great, great tool. Being able to connect to people who feel the way that you feel, who truly, not just emotionally, but physically feel the way that you feel. They know what it's like to be scared to get out of bed in the morning. They know what it's like to look at the clock and have it say 10 o'clock a.m. and think, I have a whole day of this? You want me to go through a whole day of this? <laughs> And I'm thankful for it. But then once again, you get sucked into likes and comments and checking your phone and getting your validation from who liked your photos or who responded to you. And that's why 
when I was reached out to by a really, really amazing YouTuber who said that I had a voice. I don't know why it hit me in a different way than my husband saying it or my son saying it or my friend saying it. Sometimes you need what you feel like is an unbiased opinion and when she told me that in my head I went I do have a voice and 54 people who think that it's worth listening to. So on those days, when it's 10 o'clock and you haven't showered for a week and you've been watching a House of Lies marathon, so have I. And I can look into a camera lens and I can tell you that. And I feel like I'm talking to somebody who gets me. So, I put the National Suicide Hotline at the end of all my videos because I get it. I get it. But we'll get through it. And I know that didn't sound convincing, but I said it. You know, I have I have hope back here for a reason. It's, you can only see the H, but it's back there for a reason. It's because it's the air we breathe. It's the food we eat. It might make us hurt a little bit more, but it's what we need to sustain ourselves. Hope and faith. So, I just, I've come on here and cried, and I've come on here made up, and people seem to like the made up better, but this is what chronic illness is, this is what chronic pain is, and every once in a while, I need to reach out because I have a voice and so do you so to the youtuber who reached out to me you changed my life and you know that I love you guys and as always pain recognizes pain and I see you